Good morning, welcome to another how-to video. Um, my name is Dave, CTO of DVS, and um, this one is on OnViv Device Manager. Get quite a lot of people asking about are we OnViv compliant and is there a way to check this if we're using our cameras with a third-party system that use OnViv? The answer is yes, there is. First thing you need to do is open up a web browser and type in OnViv Device Manager and then download it from one of these links available to you. Okay, so once you've downloaded that, we need to log into our camera. So on the latest camera firmware for the two-line cameras and even the four-line and then every camera model that comes out after this, you'll need to set up an OnViv user. So you need to enable it and then add the OnViv user into the camera. By default, we now disable OnViv on the latest firmware. So as you can see, there's a lovely snowy morning in Cardiff. Uh, we got stuck in the snow in Scotland for a couple of days. It's very difficult to get back, but we made it back to this video specifically for you guys. How nice is that? So log into the camera, go into configuration. And when that loads, uh, one point to bear in mind is currently the OnViv device manager is only for H.264. If you use the H.265, H.265 Plus, um, you, don't, you can still test the OnViv, but you don't get the live view stream within the OnViv device manager, but it will still show you it connecting. It just doesn't decode the video. So for purposes to show you it working fully, I've turned it to H.264 Plus standard. Okay, so firstly, when we log into the camera, you can see the modern number and you can see the firmware version. So anything over 5.5.x, so we're on 5.5.3, this will mean that we need to turn on OnViv and then add the OnViv user into the camera model itself. Okay, so first under security, what we suggest is the RTSP and web authentication, we turn from digest to digest and basic. This has uh, quite a few different effects, especially if you're using this camera with a decoder, it's critical that we change that setting. Uh, if you don't change that setting, you'll find it very difficult to pull the image from the camera into the decoder directly. So we'll already change that, so we'll just save that. And then under network, uh, we've put it in a bit of a strange place, but under network and advanced settings, under integration protocol there, we enable high vision CGI commands, and we turn that also to digest and basic, and save that. And then we have to enable OnViv. By default, it's off, but I've already enabled it. We save that. And then we have to add the OnViv user in. So let's give it a name, DVS. Let's give it a password. And we're going to make ourselves an administrator. Now you've got media user and operator. So depending on the level, depends on how much functionality you can draw from the camera. But for purposes, I'm going to use the administrator. We'll add that in and we save that. So it's very important that once you've changed all these and added it in, that we make sure we save it. Double click in does no harm. In fact, I always do that. If you go into help, there's on the who knew there was a built-in uh, help manual into every product we do but there we go here it is if you get stuck at any point in any of the camera functionality menus you can refer to the online manual there which will help guide you through and hopefully assist you again if you're stuck come back to us here and we can offer some assistance so we've added the user in we've enabled it now if we open up let's put, go back to live view let's see that snow one more time Okay, so if we go to the OnViv device manager, so we've already opened it, I've downloaded it and opened it. What we do then is log in with the credentials we just set up, so it's DVS. Click login. So it's scanning the local network now uh, for any devices that may be on the network. It's on a different subnet to the main network I use, so I need to add the device in. So I simply go to add. So I can leave all of this in and just type the IP address. So I know it's dot three dot two one three. Click apply. The camera has been added there. If I now click on it, it tells me the mod number, firmware version, and where the camera was made. But then if I click on the identification, you get all of the camera model identification there, and the OnViv version, and then the URI. You've got the time settings. You've got the maintenance. Uh, so you can do a factory reboot firmware upgrade, network settings, and there you can actually turn on OnViv to IFO discoverable and apply that. So it's now discoverable in third-party systems. You can alter the network settings. You can um, 
the, the that's the user management we've just logged into the dvs as administrator for onviv we've got the certificates system logs relay so we can activate deactivate a relay and to test a, a relay function if we can't do it any other way the web page so we can log into the camera from there and you've got your events there you've also got your live view so you've got a snapshot of the live view there so if i click on this it'll bring through the live view like i said it only currently works with h264 the pluses and h265 it doesn't quite i'm sure there'll be a, an update to the onvif device manager but it's even if we did have it set to h264 plus h265 etc it gives us a nice interface to even check the camera will connect on those credentials so we can't discredit it it will still allow us to do um, some basic testing then we've got your video streaming so you can set parameters in here mostly they'll be set within the camera directly but it does allow you to set them through the onvif device manager it's a very powerful tool and they say it's not just for height vision this is for any uh, onvif device so it's very handy to get hold of download and use i use it religiously it becomes one of my basic but most powerful test tools you can even got ptz control so if it was a ptz we'd be able to zoom in and zoom out accordingly on there uh, in fact it is a motorized zoom bullet so it just shows you that functionality there okay and there's auto focus it'll come back um that's about it guys really just to show you some basics and this is like i said one of my go-to tools um and it also shows you that the onvif uh, compatibility is still there within the camera but you do have to enable it and add the user in um, rather than a lot of people ringing us or um, you know, complaining that we're no longer on with compliant we are we just need to do some basic things uh, some other uh, other camera manufacturers have already been doing this anyway so it's not new to the market um, but i hope you found it helpful and we'll see you next tuesday for another tech tuesday video thanks a lot guys